Round two is here, and we have the Denver Nuggets matching up against the Phoenix Suns. Yet another really interesting second round matchup that's in this year's playoffs, and really just an interesting matchup, period. I think we've been very lucky in the playoffs thus far that we've avoided pretty much all but a few series that were just a straight up wash to begin with. The Nuggets, despite missing their second best player and like their fourth best player, managed to take care of the Portland Trailblazers in spite of that, and the Phoenix Suns, partially assisted by injury to the opposing team, were able to defeat the defending champion Lakers in the first round as well, so they're matching up in round two. And honestly, I feel like these teams are very comparable in talent and just how well they're coached and really everything. And because of that, I really feel that this series could go either way, even though it seems like more people are leaning one way that I don't necessarily agree with, but, 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 let's just talk about it. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall into that 50%, please subscribe because I am trying to hit 200,000 subscribers on this channel by the end of 2021. Also drop a like on this video so it does better in YouTube's algorithm. And game one of this series in particular is going to be happening at 10 o'clock today, at least Eastern Standard Time. So I'm gonna be doing a post-game recap for that game over on my second channel. So if you want to see that, go subscribe to my second channel where I am trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. All the support is much appreciated. Now first things first, I actually have to say that this series is the one that I am most conflicted by in terms of like actually rooting for somebody because I love and I mean love both of these teams. The Nuggets because of Jokic's playmaking paired with Michael Porter Jr.'s incredible chemistry with Jokic as a cutter and off ball shooter shooter. They just have a beautiful offense that's incredibly fun to watch. And for the Phoenix Suns, they shoot a million mid-range jump shots, and that's my shit. So I love watching them too. So this matchup is both amazing because I like these teams, and also I'm kind of terrified of this series because, well, I like these teams. Now first things first, for the Denver Nuggets, their biggest issue against other contender-level teams, and I did say other because yes, the Nuggets are still a contender without Jamal Murray. Their biggest issue is defense. Now, it's not as bad as you may have been led to believe. Denver's defense, along with the coaching of Michael Malone, does a fantastic job of making more out of not great defensive talent and personnel than that actual personnel would typically give you. They have a good team defensive scheme that allows the ceiling of their defense to go higher than you would typically expect. However, this team has two major weaknesses, which is their one-on-one -on -one defense is not amazing, and in this series they're going to have to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one defense, and they have players who can be targeted. Jokic is not a bad defender, contrary to popular belief. However, because of his slow-footedness, he has issues stepping up on screens. Versus the Portland Trail Blazers, they feasted on this because anytime Dame got a screen that separated him from his man, he had an easy three because Jokic was not going to step up to contest. I can very easily see something similar happening with Chris Paul and Devin Booker, though from mid-range, not as much from three because neither Chris Chris nor Booker are amazing pull-up three-point shooters like Dame, and of course, a mid-range shot is better than a three, three is more than two, but it's still not good to give them that shot because they're both elite in that area. They also don't have the best individual matchups for those two perimeter players specifically, though it's not necessarily the worst either. I imagine Will Barton, who should be coming from injury at least at some point in this series, will get a lot of the Chris Paul matchup. If it's not him, it's probably Austin Rivers. Those aren't terrible. They have decent size on Chris, but they're not going to really bother him, I don't think. And I think, maybe not initially, but at least eventually, we're going to be seeing Aaron Gordon on Devin Booker because we saw that same thing happen with Damian Lillard in the first round versus the Blazers. And I think both of those matchups should be fine, but it's not 
the best. As for DeAndre Ayton versus the Denver Nuggets this year in three games, he averaged 22 and 12 on a 70% shooting from the field. And Jokic himself says that he sometimes has issues with Ayton, so that's not ideal either. As for how the Suns defend the Nuggets, I don't love Ayton on Jokic simply because I don't think he's going to do the best job at stepping up on Jokic's jump shots where he has been elite. Uh, however, I do think overall physically he has a good matchup, which is the most important thing because you don't want Jokic to just easily push you under the basket. You either put Jay Crowder or Mikhail Bridges on Michael Porter Jr. I would lean Mikhail just because he has some incredible length, which is important against the 6'10 and also lengthy MPJ. And whether it is Bridges or or Crowder, they have to be glued to that guy because he does not stop moving off ball and he can very easily confuse you if you're not paying enough attention. Also, a player that I have to mention because of the first round matchup he had versus the Blazers is Monte Morris. He has very much stepped up in the void of Jamal Murray to be the pick and roll partner with Nikola Jokic. And in that, he had two 20 plus point performances versus the Blazers that were pivotal in them winning that series and he overall averaged 22 and 6 on good efficiency for the series. The Blazers, especially in the games where he played really well, continued to make the mistake of going under the screen and allowing Murray, not Murray, the Blazers continually made the mistake of going under the screen and allowing Morris to get open mid-range pull-ups, which he is very good at. So... Don't do that. As for some targeting situations we can see on more of the Nuggets side of things, because of course I've already mentioned the Jokic thing for the Suns, uh, Jokic getting switched on a smaller player is always a good thing and it's free cheese. So whoever can, or however you can make that kind of thing happen, you do it. They did it a bit versus the Blazers. And honestly, the Blazers kind of volunteered at a certain point to put Robert Covington at center and that was taken advantage of quickly. Overall, I'll give the Suns an edge on the matchups. I think that's pretty clear. The Suns have statistically been one of the better defenses in the league this year, and the Nuggets have been more middle of the pack to lower tier last I checked. So just by that alone, we pick the Suns in that regard. On the Nuggets side of things, I don't love Barton or Austin Rivers being Chris Paul's primary defender. Aaron Gordon has the best chance against Devin Booker, but he's also slower than Devin Booker, and that can be taken advantage of and Jokic can be easily targeted because he is either going to give up the role to Aiton unless Aaron Gordon brings help to cut that off or he is going to give up a Chris Paul or Devin Booker mid-range shot both of those are things that the Suns will happily take. However, the Nuggets, while the Suns have better depth and health and defense, they do have a superstar. The Suns don't. And by the way, before people freak out, Superstar by my definition, which is the best player on a championship team in my mind, and I don't think that player exists on the Suns. I do think that exists on the Nuggets with Nikola Jokic. He's about to win MVP, obviously. The separation between Jokic and then Devin Booker or Chris Paul, whoever you consider better, it honestly doesn't matter. I'm not certain one way or the other. Either way, the difference between Jokic and those two guys is rather significant. I'm a big believer in superstars being the most important thing to have for your basketball team in order to win a championship, and that's the reason why I have not counted out the Nuggets in this playoffs to go as far as the Eastern Conference Finals, and honestly, depending on who they get in the Conference Finals, maybe even winning it and going on to the Finals, because the Nuggets, even without Jamal Murray, have Jokic, and I'm just a big believer in that guy. So for that reason, I have the Denver Nuggets winning this series in spite of the fact that the Suns match up well and the Nuggets could very easily give them a lot of easy points. I am not strong in that prediction. I think a majority of people are leaning Phoenix and I understand why, but because of Jokic, I'm going to say Nuggets in six, but probably more likely seven. And honestly, if it goes the other way, wouldn't be slightly shocked. I see a lot of people comment that they're like annoyed at me when I say stuff like that, but like, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. I could see either team winning this series I would not be surprised. So I'm not gonna act like I strongly believe the Nuggets will win or something like that because I don't, so there you go. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video. The link to his newest video is in the description. I used to have his link to my description and in the last video he like, 
jokingly, I, I hope jokingly, poked at me for not having pointed out specifics about his channel. I used to have a channel in my description and I took it out for one video description for whatever reason. And then I had just been copying that one ever since. So I completely forgot I took that out. I, I apologize, Rudy. But his most recent video is him going through his jersey collection. And it's the weirdest fucking jersey collection you'll ever see in your life. Like, he has a Andre Iguodala Grizzlies jersey. I think that says all you need to know. So go check out that video that's linked in the description. And shout out to Rudy for editing this video. That is the end of this video. Please be sure to like, subscribe, remember to get content like this, and keep the music. <laughs>